now I'm going to talk about how you locate the thermocline. And this is going to be your graph. So let's say you're out in water that's 29 feet deep. You've got your bottom on your graph here. If you have a decent graph that has a high pixel rating and it's powerful, what you can do to find your thermocline is go out in water that's deeper than where you would expect to see the thermocline. So we talked about that number being on average 22 to 23 feet deep. So you're gonna to wanna to go into water that's deeper than 22 to 23 feet. If you go looking for it in 14, 15 foot of water, you're not gonna find it because it doesn't exist. So you got your water line here on your graph and you got a few fish here that are showing up on your graph and then you might see some fish down here and let's say a couple of balls of shad here some more fish okay but you don't see anything else on your graph well if you make sure you have the power turned all the way up on your graph and increase the sensitivity on your graph and as you increase the sensitivity you will begin to see a very distinct line on your graph and it usually looks kind of fuzzy but it'll be obvious if you're out at 30 foot of water or 40 foot of water or 50 foot of water and you start looking around 22 to 23 feet on your graph you're going to see this band of water and generally, you're going to see a whole fish down through here. And you might, again, see one or two fish down like this. But this is pretty much going to be empty without a whole lot of activity in it other than structure and maybe a few fish. And again, that is your dead zone where you're not going to fish. You can fish it, but chances are you're probably not going to be very successful catching catfish below the thermocline. You may catch one or two, but chances are you're not going to do very well fishing below that water. Now, on occasion, you can also see this second band of water. This happens here in Texas sometimes when it gets really hot. Then sometimes if I drive around and look, I can, I can barely see a faint band right here at about 12 to 13 foot. But it's never, in my experience, been as distinct as this second band down here on the bottom that marks that dead water where there's really no oxygen or anything else down there on the bottom. So everything from the surface down to that band is going to be productive water. So that's how you find the thermocline. This has major effects on summertime catfishing. I was out on the lake the other day with some clients and I was fishing up in some pretty shallow water. We were catching fish just left and right and there was a guy that I was watching fishing out in the big middle of the lake probably in about 38 or 40 feet of water and he sat there for probably close to an hour and I never saw him try to reel anything in. He just kind of sitting. I ran into him at the boat ramp and 
he asked me if we did any good and I, we were talking back and forth and he mentioned to me that they didn't even get a bite. Well, he was fishing out in 30 foot of water, 40 foot of water, we'll say 40 foot. He was bottom fishing for catfish, straight down. He was letting his bait drop to the bottom and he was reeling it up one turn. So his bait was sitting right here, right in the middle of the dead zone. So if you take this information, you can use it to your advantage to learn how to rule out unproductive water in your lake below the thermocline. I'm going to do another post and another video here that's going to show more information about how you use the thermocline to your advantage and how to fish the thermocline. But because this is kind of a long topic, I'm going to break it up into a couple of different sections. So make sure you go to learntocatchcatfish.com and keep an eye out for the next video and post on fishing the thermocline and how the thermocline affects the catfishing. Until then, this is Chad Ferguson, learntocatchcatfish.com.